I was charged on terrorism and subversion together with the 21 people. And it was also uh, a way of fighting for my, um, you know, for myself, because I was the only gay person within 21 people. I am black and I'm gay. I cannot separate the two parts of me into secondary or primary struggle. It will be all one struggle. I remember distinctly when I arrived in Johannesburg being completely blown away by listening to Simon. He was fierce, he was outrageous, he was camp and he understood the power of his own sexuality. Blacks continued to be classified as non-citizens and the South African political and social climate was in turmoil. Within this oppressive setting, anti-apartheid activists Simon and Coley formed GLOW, the gay and lesbian organization of Witwatersrand, adding sexual orientation to his fight for equal rights. So what is GLOW? It is something that is hybrid, multidisciplinary. It has elements of opera, elements of drag, elements of lip-syncing, archive, it really strives to tell Simon's story, but in a way that perhaps pushes the boundaries of what we expect from any of these forms. Lip syncing to sound archive. Lip syncing to use as a way of telling the queer history of Simon McCauley. These combined with things like voguing and ballroom culture, which is taken off within the transgender and queer communities of South Africa. Even though now we have the words, right? Now the words are non-binary and gender queer, and now we have all these different words that we're using. Then all we were was just other. And this other was beautiful to me and to us. And so about eight, ten of us would walk up and down the street and people would say, girls, no, boys, what? Let's talk also about the music of Glow the Opera. In true style, I'm going to work with various different genres, from real disco, from those 1980s. Simon loved disco. He wrote in jail that he couldn't wait to get the latest Diana Ross tape, Gladys Knight and the Pips. But then also, of course, there was another musical language out there, which was the protest songs. Simon was part of those big protest songs, those big struggle songs of South Africa where hundreds of thousands of people marched in rallies and sang and toy toyed down the streets of Johannesburg. From that all the way to great, beautiful arias, this is all part of one world of music. So I think this opera is going to bring back conversations about politicizing what it means to be um, black and queer in the world that we live in today. And what we do know about being black and queer in our society at the moment is that it's still um, a difficult experience. The texts and libretto for this work will be both found within this very, very rich archive of letters, of diaries whilst he was in jail, some of which were even written on tissue paper and smuggled out to various comrades outside prison. And I looked at the way I, as a person, struggled to come out, all the fight, all the emotional I went through. And I said, hang when I wasn't alone on that situation, or I couldn't have been alone. There must be other gay people who 
find themselves in the same situation as I am. They speak of a constitutional, democratic political order in which regardless of color, gender, religion, political opinion, or sexual orientation, the law will provide for the equal protection of all our citizens. South Africa is one of, I think, the only one still with a constitution that includes sexual orientation under the Bill of Rights, yeah? And that is still a phenomenal thing to a lot of people around the world. This opera is an exciting one for me because it's bringing back Simon, it's bringing back conversations about what he stood for and his values. Um, and I can't think of a better way of bringing that conversation to life than a musical opera that's also enjoyable in terms of lyricism and everything. So I'm really excited for this project and can't wait to see how it'll unfold.